Hey everybody, in this episode we're going to talk about how to list the contents in a directory, how to navigate directories, and how to become a master at tab completion. We've talked about some of these throughout the previous videos, but now we're going to go into more detail. So let's get started. So the first thing we got our terminal window open and to get everybody on the same page, we're going to change directory into the home directory. And then again, PWD, you can see that this is our path. Now the first thing is LS. That's going to list all of the content. And now we can add options after that. And you do that with a hyphen. So hyphen A, that's going to add a little bit of extra stuff because the A means all. And this will include anything that starts with a dot. So files are white here and they start with a dot meaning they are a hidden file. So if you want to see that in the GUI, we can go to home and then click these three bars over here, show hidden files. So now you can see everything here. So I'm gonna put these side by side by dragging them to the edges. And I'm just gonna issue that command one more time just to get a clear representation. So anything that's white here is a file, such as bash history, bash logout, bash rc, leshist profile, and then sudo as admin successful. So those are all of the files. And then anything that's blue is a directory or a folder, which these can also be hidden directories as well. So generally, if something starts with a dot, it means don't touch it. It's there for a reason, but it's not something you typically go into and change settings. Well, you might on occasion, but that's just a general rule. It's hidden for a reason, so you don't go in there and tinker with stuff. So let's go back into full screen. So that first option that we talked about, hyphen A, is short for all. And you can also type out all but when you use the full word, you actually use two hyphens, ls dash dash all, and it works the same way. Another option in addition to all is hyphen l, and this will give us more details about each file, including permissions, size, date, and all that stuff. So when you have two options, if they both have a shorthand version, such as dash a and dash l you can actually combine these into one so here's the first way to do it ls dash a dash l or what you can do is you can just put them together ls dash a l and they're also able to be swapped so you could do ls dash l a and that works as well so a quick summary on options, you can do two dashes with the full name of the option, or you can do a single dash with the shorthand of that option. You can combine multiple shorthand options just by using a single dash and putting each of the characters. You can get a reference for all of these different options by saying man and then whatever command you're talking about, such as ls, and you can scroll through here. Now, not all of them are going to have that long version. So for example, dash L, the one we were just using, it only has the shorthand here. And the capital L is something totally different. You see, in Ubuntu and Linux, things are case sensitive. A lowercase L and an uppercase L are two different things. This isn't the case by default on Windows. All right, let's clear. So now I want to talk a moment about tab completion. So if you say something like CD and then capital D E hit tab, it'll fill out whatever matches what you were typing. How does it know to do this? Well, let's just go back to our home directory. And when we say LS, you can see we have D E for desktop. Well, looking through all of these options, desktop is the only one that matches the start of what we we're typing. So when we say DE, the only folder we could be referring to would be desktop. That's because documents and downloads are both DO, not DE. Now, if you are less specific and you do something that multiple things could match, such as CD with a capital D here, 
Well, that could be desktop, that could be documents, or that could be downloads. When we hit tab, nothing happens. However, if we hit tab again, two tabs, it'll show all the options that could potentially match what we were typing. So it could be desktop, it could be documents, or it could be downloads. All these other ones, well, those don't make sense. Those don't start with a D. At this point, you can start typing another character, such as DO, do double tab again, and it will say, oh, here are the options, documents, or downloads. That's because at this point, desktop no longer qualifies because it has DE instead of DO. And then once we distinguish by saying some other character, such as DW, well, now tab will fill it out in its entirety. All right, cool. So let's go back, make sure we're in the home directory just so everybody's on the same page and clear. I want to talk a little bit more about this tab completion and I want to issue a command mkdir, which is make directory to make another directory. And we're gonna call this down low with a capital D. Hit enter and now ls, you can see we have desktop documents downloads and down low. So if we type cddo, well at this point we could be trying to change directory into downloads or down low, but the computer doesn't know by default. Up until this point we would hit tab twice and it would show us the options. However, because there is actually consistent characters between these, the wn and the l as well as the o, are the same for these. We got down low and down low. When we hit tab just once, actually we have to be a little bit more specific by adding that W because documents matched as well. Now when we hit tab, you can see it filled out all the way up until it can't make a decision anymore. So it knew that we would have WNLO, WNLO, but it didn't know after that point. So now you can do double tabs and choose which one you want. So quick summary of that is single tab will autofill up until it doesn't know which choice you want. And then you can do double tab to see the different options. Maybe it's a little obnoxious for me to go through this in such detail, but it's not a tool I want you to skip. I want you to use this for all the upcoming videos because using the tab completion is going to save you from so many different typos and errors just to make sure you're actually selecting something that exists and not just assuming it exists. And this is important for other commands. So for example, if we go back to the home directory and we say touch and we'll just go with down low. Well, I am using tab here so I know it exists. And when I hit enter, I know that I'm issuing this touch command on a file that exists. What the touch command does, it's not really important here. I'll explain in just a second. But if we say something like touch, and let's just say I was trying to type it out and I just, I used a lowercase d. Well, when I hit enter, hey, it looks like everything worked exactly the same. Well, this first command actually updates the timestamp for that directory, whereas the second command creates an entirely new file. So when we say ls-l, we can see in here we have the down low directory, which has the latest timestamp. And we also have this new down low file that we created with this command here. So my point is, if you're trying to do something as simple as update the timestamp on a directory or a file, and you mistype it, you might actually make a whole new file. So by using tab completion, you can be sure you're touching a file that already exists and you're not pulling something out of the air. And the most common example of where this is going to happen, where you're gonna make a mistake and you're not gonna realize it, is probably with capitalization. Like here, I'm using a lowercase d, didn't even think about it. So let's go ahead and remove that file. We'll say rm down low. That's going to remove this down low file. And we can also remove the directory by saying rm 
down low as well. You cannot remove down low is a directory. You can just put another option in here, which is R, and that'll remove that directory. So now we're back to how we had it. And we'll clear the screen, and we are at a clean slate for the next video. So that was a lot of information. If you are familiar with these things, then maybe this seemed like kind of basic, but I think explaining it in such detail is important to really understand how it's working. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and stay tuned for the upcoming episode. Peace out.